I don't care who you are, how tough you are, whatever, you lose your mother, that's gonna hurt you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right here, it's gonna hurt you. That was my mother, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, she was probably one of the couple of people that could, like, calm me down. Like, yeah. you know? My mother, she had epilepsy. Scariest thing I've ever witnessed in my life. My mother just dropping to the floor, shaking. Being a kid, not really knowing what to do. Only yeah. thing I really could have done was, like, I put a pillow under her head and just try to wait for her to come back, you yeah. know what I mean? You, you grow up and you, you, know, you, want to, you start understanding it more, you know what I mean? Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I am your host, B. Luke. I got a special guest with me in the building today. Why don't you tell the people your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Michael. Everyone knows me, Mizzy Dior, El Mizzy Dior. I'm originally from the port, 4-4. You know, I just wanted to come on here just to uh, shed some light, some positivity for everybody because, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of negative things going out there in the world. I'm just trying to brighten someone's life up, brighten someone's day up. I haven't had the easiest, like, upbringing or anything like that. My mother passed away when I was 11. My father, he was never in the picture. My mother's brother and his wife, my aunt, they took me in, though, when mm-hmm. I was younger. So I w- I'm definitely blessed to live on the Cape. So okay. I lived out there in the cave for a little while also. Yeah, it's early age, like around 10, 11, getting in trouble in the school and stuff like that. From then on, just kind of went downhill. So let's just rewind it a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah. I know what the port is, yeah, but yo. why don't you tell the people, you know, we, so got, the, a, we got a national fan yeah, base, luckily, so tell true, the people true. where the port is. So the port, everyone knows it, Section 4, formerly known as Section 4, but it's Washington Elms Projects, Newtown Courts. It's one of the more... Famous areas in Cambridge. You, you you say Cambridge, you automatically that's one of the first hoods is the port and the coast. Either either or, it doesn't matter. No hoods better than the other. Just Absolutely. you know what I mean. And I'm a, and I'm East a, Cambridge. I'm an East Cambridge kid. So, East you know. Cambridge comes into the factor also, and then so, North Cambridge. Where did you go to elementary school? I go? went I went to the Cape. I was around um, 10, 11 years old. Okay. My mother passed away when I was 11. So, Dang. But I was going back and forth from the Cape to Cambridge. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My mother, she had epilepsy. Scariest thing I've ever witnessed in my life. My mother just dropping to the floor, shaking. Being a kid, not really knowing what to do. Only yeah. thing I really could have done was like I put a pillow under her head and just try to wait for her to come back. You yeah. know what I mean? You, you grow up and you, you, know, you, want to, you start understanding it more. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's like the Cape. No offense to anybody on the Cape or from there, but it's that wasn't for me. What would you? What was it about the Cape that you didn't like? Too quiet. I was always getting into trouble. Mm-hmm. Stood out. You know what I mean? I didn't. I felt like I didn't fit in because I stood out. You know what yeah. I mean? Sabotaged my 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 confidence. I didn't really have that many friends either. Kind of stuck to myself like a loner. So what was yes. it about you that stuck out? Was it the like these people? higher class money type of deal? In a way, yeah, because, I mean, there's a lot of preppy kids out there and kind of snobbish, like, I come from money, I'm better than you type of kids, type of people. As I said, no offense to anybody out there or whatever, but it's just, it's like, Capes is not, it's good for retirement and mm-hmm. to raise your kids. That, In my yeah. eyes, so Wasn't when you me. say you were getting in trouble, what do you mean? Just at school? At yeah, this point, yeah. At I first? ended up stabbing a kid with a pencil in sixth grade because he was talking trash to me or whatever. You know, yeah. just <laughs> what did that lead to? Suspension or did suspension, they kick you out for that? I got suspended for like two days for that, and then went back to school, and I just kept getting into fights and stuff. I just at that after I lost my mother, I kind of yeah. just. Gave up on life. I didn't care about nothing. Right. Did they ever try to do like an alternative school for you? Or um, I was in special ed classes, but I mean, yeah. I, I I was pretty smart from like when I was younger. I was a small kid. I just made dumb decisions. Yeah. You know, I didn't really. Now that I look like I look back on everything, like I regret not like making the right decisions yeah. when I should have, because I probably wouldn't have ended up in places that I shouldn't even have ended up in, you know what, what I mean? What effect do you think that had on you losing your mom at such a young age, man? <sighs> that had that affected everything. You know, that was that was my mother. I don't care who you are, how tough you are, whatever, you lose your mother, that's gonna hurt you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right here, it's gonna hurt you, you know? And I got my mother tatted right here, R.P. Veronica. Rest in peace. It was her birthday this yesterday, you know what I'm saying, April 9th, so okay. coming here today is kind of crazy, you know, it's a blessing in disguise. Do you think that was why you were misbehaving in school? Was it over that? Kind yeah, of in a way, out? yeah, because, like, she, it's, that was that was my mother, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, she was probably one of the couple of people that could, like, calm me down, like, yeah. you know? At any point, 
at that age, was there any adults trying to put you in therapy or anything like that? So my, what like, being fast done forward to... a little bit, like 16, my aunt, she did, she tried to put me in therapy. I went one time and I'm like, yeah, I'm, this is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know whether. Sometimes you're just not ready. Yeah, I wasn't ready. I was just reckless. Like, I, yeah. I left the crib. I didn't want to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wasn't living with my uncle no more. I left. I felt bad for doing that, but it's like I I just wanted to be on my own, you know. I just I wasn't trying to be under a roof, like under certain rules and stuff like that. I just wanted to just be on my I got my license, dipped yeah. out, you know. How long was it until you put the Cape Cod behind you? Twenty years old. I went well, I did a bit in Barnstable. I did like a year and a half, eighteen months, has probation and stuff like that. Yeah. And then after that, I came, I came back to Boston. I lived with my grandmother for a little bit. Okay. Was that so, your first time getting locked up? Or? By a miracle, I never made it to DYS or yeah. Juvie or anything like that. Okay. So I, you, I've heard stories like Harvard Street and everything like that. So how old were you when you went to um, Barnstable County? I was 17. 17. So let's yeah. talk about that experience. That's a young age to be going into any adult. What's that experience like? A word of a lie. I walked in there. I was a little nervous, right? My first cellmate, no word of a lie, strike me dead right now with lightning. My celly was like this jacked up white dude, his shirt off, had a swat, big ass swat sticker right here. Mm. I'm, all, I'm like, I got to go in the cell with him? Shit was crazy. How was that? Because, I mean, you're from Cambridge. I feel like us kids from Cambridge, some of us got a little bit of swag, right? Yeah. That's kind of It's, it's a lot of diversity, of you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the opposite of probably what that, his tattoo stands for. Yeah, was, I, I wasn't feeling that. Like, I, like I, I'm against that type of, um, like, beliefs or whatever. Right. Like, everyone has their own beliefs and, um, like, they believe in the whatever, you know? That's their opinion. Right. By all means, whatever. But I just, I can't go for that. So how did, how long did that cellmate situation I mean, last? I was just like a pre-trial block or whatever. So I walked in, we start talking, and then like he was down for like all robbery or whatever, right. home invasion, he faced like ten years or whatever. And then like he noticed like I was kind of like mm -hmm. kind of moving nervous, like like I don't know, like looking he's like yeah, I mean I got this right here, but yeah. uh, it's, you know. Because everyone tries to flip it because the swastika originally means it was, it was a sign of peace. Right. Originally. Yeah. So the Hitler just kind of went crazy with it. It right. just took it to a whole different level. But yeah, everything was copacetic after we talked. But still, it's like, yeah, I can't, can't be walking around. got to put a shirt on, bro. Right. Cover that we, up. <laughs> talk a little bit about the vibe in, in that county. Oh, yeah, that is Because I know you have trash. hyenas. I've yeah. seen, like... Yeah, you know hiatus I mean? is a little bit more diverse than yeah. most other towns on the Cape and stuff like that. Yeah, the jail was like a couple Spanish, a couple black dudes, yeah. white guys. It really wasn't wasn't really that crazy, like so diverse diverse. You said pre trial. You yeah. ended up getting time. Yeah, I ended up doing um what you gonna call it? I ended up doing a year. That was actually my first bid. Mm -hmm. I caught a second bid because I ended up getting caught trafficking. I ended up doing, that's the one I did 18 months for. Oh, okay. I did a year for that. It was like driving on suspended license. And then I just kept like petty stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And these are both in the Cape? Your, yeah. Your bids? Yeah. Okay. There was a couple breaking and enterings and stuff like that also. So, so all together with that, I did like three and a half years. Okay. So so you do your time in, in the Cape, Barnstable County. Yeah. Now what? Where do you go? Now you're coming back to Cambridge? Yeah, Boston? I came What's I came back to the Boston area. Mm -hmm. I went with my grandmother. I was staying there for a little bit, and I was on probation. So how to do the probation, whatever. How did I that was, go? Did you complete the probation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was never a good candidate for probation at all, ever. Since I was younger, my teens never, like, I just... Cause I was getting high and stuff yeah. like that. I was doing pills, Xanax, yeah. perks, everything. When, so when's that become part of your story, bro? That right there, I started messing around with drugs when I was like 14, 13 mm -hmm. years old. It was just trying to numb the pain and stuff like that, having to deal with being an outsider. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, that's what I felt like, you know what yeah. I mean? I just, you know, everyone does drugs for a reason. Sometimes they just do it just to self-medicate, you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. they just do it just to do it. But a lot of times it's like, people really hurt. So they're gonna wanna try to get rid of that pain and unfortunately a lot of people die from that yeah. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ever get to a point where you were like physically dependent on yeah, whatever? Yeah, of course, yeah. So like what, perks or? Perks, lean, Xanax. All of that. I did it all, yeah. 
What was the, the first the time fake, you noticed? The fake thirties coming around that had the fat and oil in it. Yeah, that was a wrap. Talk about the first time you had a detox. First time I had a detox was in jail. It was mm -hmm. like a cell bake. Did you know it was coming? Catch you up by surprise a little bit? Yeah, a little bit because I never really dealt with it before because I was just yeah. go, go, go every day, green light, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I'm embarrassed to even say it, but it's like it's part of my life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to shy away from that, but... It was like cold sweats all the time, just in the cell. It was right. bad. It was in Cell Bay too. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was, I was better than the Cape though. Cell Bay way better. Yeah. Well, you better off to live in your truth and just own it, bro. Yeah, of course. You know, you know the I, there's a lot of people out there that just try to deny, 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 mm -hmm. and they don't take accountability for nothing in their life. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yo, would you start like I. I used to deny shit like, oh, I ain't no, I ain't no drug addict, blah, right. blah, blah, I ain't this, I ain't that. But it's like, once you really just like grasp onto it and just accept it for what it is, mm -hmm. it's like a weight right off your shoulder, you right. know what I mean? There's a reason why that's step one though, because not even recovery, any problem in your life that you gotta, you wanna solve, exactly. you have to admit the problem is there exactly. to address it, you know what I mean? So you talk about going, <clears throat> South Bay, okay. Yeah. How long you make the move back to the Boston area? Yeah. How long in between so, you end up getting <laughs> locked up, man? This shit's crazy. So, all right, so I got out on parole for like 30 days, went to Lynn. This was before I went to my grandmother's. I, I don't know why I left this out, but it's, it's kind of it's kind of funny, but it's not because I'm just, I, I'm an asshole because right. I didn't even last a whole month. It was like 28 days. I, I failed the drug test. I had a job at Five Guys in Peabody. Yo, it looked like they was going for, like, uh, Frank Lucas or something. Mm. They had, like, 20, like, cop cars across the street, like, the over, Petco. All over a failed drug test? Yeah, because wow. when you're on parole, like, they is nah, different, I'm you know what I mean? So, like you said, it's it's a mindset thing. Myself, my my first parole, county parole, yeah. 30 days, too, but not even a failed drug test, a new case. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it happens. So, not even do I come back on that bit now I got an open case, and yeah, it's a whole yeah. thing, and how it gradually. So, it wasn't even, so, I'm saying you went from the Cape to Boston, yeah. but, and it wasn't even a um, It wasn't even a month. month. Okay, so what are the events that lead up to that? A lot could happen in a month. Yeah, so like I was, I went to a sober house in Lynn, right off Chestnut Street. I ended up getting a job at Five Guys or whatever. Just I ended up messing around, got high. I tried kind of diluting the the drug test, the piss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that didn't work. They're like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> By what, <laughs> flushing out with water? Yeah, I tried flushing out with yeah. water and stuff like that. and. Yeah, that didn't help. That didn't. Well, yeah. I gotta. So they come, they get you at Five Guys. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Uniform, everything. And then Crazy. where do you go from there? Straight I went to back, the jail. Yeah, I went back to um the Barnstable House of Corrections. I only had like a couple more weeks, or like three, four, like a month almost. Yeah. Wrapped that up. Went went to my grandmother's in East Boston, and then I ended up um, catching a case. In Easty? Yeah. Okay, what happens? Possession of Percocet. <laughs> okay, so it's the drugs. Yeah, the drug. yeah, that's... Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, it comes down to eat, what, whether selling, doing, yeah. or anything really, or doing stuff to get money to buy them. No, exactly. You take that out of the equation, Yeah. those jails will be empty. Nah, for real. You know what I'm You're saying? You're not lying. You're not lying. What, it's a possession thing, not yeah, a distribution it's just a, Yeah, it wasn't a trafficking okay. charge or anything like that. So what do they possession. do? You just get a bail off the rip? Yeah, or? I ended up bailing out, and then I fought it because I had the probation from the Cape still, but I had to transfer it to East Boston. Okay. They're like, oh, you got to take drug court or because right. I could have I could have um just wrapped up, just got it thrown out or whatever, mm -hmm. but they're like, yeah, take drug court. Okay. I was like, all right, that's cool. Talk about drug that court. experience because so, I know some people handle it differently. Yeah, I've seen people yeah, come in six times. On I never, that. I never like witnessed anything like that before. Mm -hmm. It was actually, um, it was cool. You well, just I mean? explain it's, it for somebody that don't know what it is. So, drug court, you got like three phases. You got phase one, phase two, phase three. Like phase one is like three months. Phase two, is three months, and then on um, phase three, I want to say is two months. It might be three months. I forget. It was like okay. 2016, 2017, I graduated. So 2013 is when I got into drug court. Mm -hmm. Like, it took me a little while to graduate. If I said 2017, I graduated, right. you know what I mean? So I, you took drug court from the street? Yeah, well, from okay. the street because the, the court mandated it to yep. like, yo, take drug court or else... Like, see you later, you're going back, you know what okay. I mean? I'm now, like, did you have right. to go into a program for drug court, or you just had to So, I, I started out at home. I was at my grandmother's house. So, I guess the judge 
didn't like it was Judge McDonald out of East Boston. He was a lenient judge. He's all right. He's cool. But he didn't like me being home. I ended up violating. Dirty urine. See you later. Go go sit your ass down for like 30, 60 days or whatever. Nashville That's, Street? Yeah, Nashville Street, South Bay. That's so what talk I, about your first time. What was it Nashville Street or South Bay? Suffolk County? Because now we got Suffolk County is a little bit different from Way from different. So. I went to Nash. I went to 4-1 for like a day. And then they shipped me over to South Bay because I guess they had the pre-trial was on 161, 162. Okay. So I went over there. That block's small. It was probably like the size of this room. This plus like maybe like double this. Okay. And it, was, it was a small block. It was like two tiers. But it was like, uh, it was weird. It's kind of hard to explain that block. Cause How long are you on that block? I was there for like, I want to say three months. Three months? Yeah. What's the first thing that you notice about when you get in there comparing it to your only other comparison? Yeah, I mean, reference is yeah, County. so it's way different. You know what I mean? You got to like, people pu pull up to you like, oh, where you from? Where you from? Where you from? You know what I mean? You're trying they, to like uh, heart check you and stuff. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, way, like, check see, you or whatever. You yeah, see like check temperature, see if you're on timing or whatever. But it's like, oh, I'm from the port four four. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like only beef we got is Mystic Projects, but that's that's younger kids. That's the younger mm -hmm. generation. You know what right. I mean? So like they try to like see where you're from, whatever. Do they try to press you because you a white dude there? Because you go in there with braids and stuff like that. You know, some people are gonna talk some shit or whatever. Look but at you funny. Like, yeah, but I just, I don't even care. You know what I mean? We got a problem going to sell real quick. No issues. Yeah. You know what did I mean? They, did it have to come to that that first time? A couple of times. I got to a couple bangs, but yeah. it's whatever. You know. But was it comes just, with the territory? Did you get caught? Have to do any whole time for that, or um, whole time for anything? No, stay? that first thing. No. Okay. So, so um, eventually, what do you? What happens? You get out to a program now? Is that yeah? How they do so it? they sent me over to the um, Salvation Army right here in Cambridge. Oh, okay. Right next door. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I almost completed it. I ended up leaving. This is the first time I went there. I ended up leaving. I ended up going back to jail. So just talk about the thought process. Why do you leave? I'm just, I just, I was like right there at the finish line. Mm -hmm. And I quit. Like, I I don't know. It's, it's was it was tempting going... being so close? I mean, the project is right there. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wow. every, everything I know is like right here, right outside the door. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like the train's right there. Just see you later. You know what I mean? Just... And that's what happened. You what, walked out, hopped on the train. Yeah, and... it's, it's bad. How bad. long until? Uh, so now you're pretty much on the run. Yeah, right? I ended up hooking up back up with an ex. We was chilling for like, like a month or two or whatever, and it was just going downhill. I'm like, yo, what the fuck what was I even thinking? Like, now you getting back into, you know. Popping the pill, yeah, and stuff yeah, like that going well. right back to that. What about drinking? Is drinking ever a problem? Like, my my father, he was an alcoholic. Okay, that's what like, that's what family members told me and stuff yeah. like that. So I think that's where I get like my addiction. Yeah, like it's genetic for sure. Yeah, no, genetic. My, I mean, I don't. I mean, we so. don't know each other like that. Like my mom's an addict. My dad went to prison back in the day. What eventually, till you get back on it? How does it come to a? To a head. It's crazy because I was doing really good for myself. Like I was about to be up out of there, complete mm -hmm. it. I had a good security job. I was doing security at Foot Locker, but it was for a company out of Houston, Texas. My man's ended up giving me the job. I ended up meeting some rappers too. Like a whole bunch of rappers came through. Like you know, Drew, Drew Pop from um, yeah. uh, Coke Boys or whatever. I met him, took a couple flicks with him. I met Cheesy Dior from Coke Boys too. Um, so you really living life? Yeah, I was I was having I was having a good time, and it's like bad bad decisions. You know what I mean? Like I I'm always just like go 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 go, yeah. and it's like when you start getting older. This is what I realized. Like when you start getting older, you actually start to like really stop and think before it. it a lot yeah. of people just react before thinking. It's like no, my, I can't live like that no more. My whole thing is, and I always say this, man, is like you know. It starts with catching yourself after the fact. Then yeah. eventually you'll catch yourself while you're doing it. But the whole point is to get to catch it while it's in the thought process before you make an action. And exactly. Think, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. But that comes with it comes with practice and time. Yeah. And, and like I said, start and catching yourself after. Like looking yeah. back and be like, damn, I messed up. But like you said, a lot of people, they don't have self-accountability. Yeah, they no. won't even say that. So they can never really... Grow as a person. Exactly. So yeah, important. they're still stuck in their ways and it just, mm -hmm. you ain't going nowhere in life if you keep, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, old ways don't open new doors. Absolutely. You know? So I take it, what you didn't turn yourself in. How I did. It, how do you come to that decision? I had to. I just wanted to get over, get get done with drug court, just wanted to finish with probation because, like, 
going on like a few years, you know what I right. mean? It, it, it was annoying. Well, it gets to a point when you're not, if you're like, this is how I look at being on the run. If it's not something serious where you you talk about decades, <laughs> yeah, where it's like, why, you want to run for three years when you're only looking at two and a half, you could have been done with it. You know exactly, what I mean? So exactly. that's, you know, that's, that's probably part of it, not knowing you're not indicted, right? You yeah, This no, is just a district court yeah, thing. It just, yeah, like, it is what it stuff, is. You're yeah. young, you know, you got it in you. So you turn yourself in, what happens? So like every time like you, you mess up a drug court, the longer the stay is in jail. Mm. It's like, so the first time was like three months. The, the second time when I turned myself in was like five, six months. Yeah. I'm like, damn, what the fuck, this shit's crazy. All I did was I had, like, had a dirty urine and I left the program. I'm like, what the fuck? Is drug court, you go to court every week too? So or? like, uh, so when you're in phase one, you go every every Tuesday. Every week, or I don't know if like other courts are like different, different day, but if they have once different a days, week, but it's once a week. And then phase two is like every other week, and then phase three is like every three weeks. So when you violate, you go back, you start all over. Mm -hmm. So I reset like four times, three yeah. times. So after I did a little five months, six months, I went back to Sally's mm -hmm. right next door, mm -hmm. graduated, nice. went back home, went back to my grandmother's crib in East Boston, was thriving, I was doing good, doing good. Nope. <laughs> what happens? Couple months down the road, yeah, violation. I ended up ODing. I ended up doing some stupid, wild, crazy shit in Amesbury. I ended up ODing, flatlined. I was out of here. I was about to be out so of here. Just talk about that experience. What do you just all of a sudden you come to and like, yeah, people so, around you? Yeah, uh, it was bad. So I was with an ex. I went out there just to chill, just to like get my mind off shit or whatever. You know, we ended up getting a telly. Like the, this is when the fake perks coming. Mm. And they weren't real perks. I ended up getting they, were, they had fentanyl on them. That's why I went out. When I when I come through, the cops they're like there was like one right here, one right here, one right here standing over me. I come up. First thing I do is I go to my pockets because I had a whole bunch of I had like three thousand on me. I think the cops like, oh you looking for this? Here's mm. me my money. I'm like yo, is this a setup? Like what's going on right mm -hmm. here? Because in my head I'm like, oh man, I had a whole bunch of thirties on me. Mm. So I'm thinking I'm about to go to jail. <laughs> Damn. Shorty was smart. She called she the him. she called the ambulance. She she flushed on. Like, Damn. What the fuck? I mean, is something like that? <laughs> it was. It, it, is that you know something they got to hit you with the um the yeah Narcan? the Narcan yeah. So I now, came, what's that? Is you immediately sick? Because that's what I hear. Like you you get. I I was actually I was all right. I was fine when I came through, but I still had to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I went to the hospital. Shorty grabbed me. We left. It was like. I want to say like an hour after we left, we went to a store. And I'm like, damn. I was like thinking. I'm like, oh, I appreciate you like saving my life. She, oh, she started crying. She's like, I thought I lost you. You was dead. You wasn't coming through. Like you, you scared me, Michael. Yeah. I'm like, oh, so I apologize. And then all of a sudden, this feeling just came through my body. I ran outside. I started throwing up. Mm. And I guess I was like with the side effects or whatever. Yeah, because like the the um the Narcan and shit and the drugs, but like it's I, like I, an instant sickness. Yeah, from what I, yeah, from what I hear. But wow. that was that was crazy. So what, I mean, is this a wake up call to you, or are you just kind of like it is what it is? I'm still, still young at that same time, thing? so I just didn't care really. I'm like I make sure that you know mm -hmm. it's not really. I was, when I was younger, like I didn't care. Like right. I woke up expecting to die. You know what I'm saying? If I die, it is what it is. Yeah. That's always been on my mind when I was growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is that the only time you overdose? No, I had, that was probably, one, two, was my, that was my third one, my third, third OD. Damn. Yeah. Damn, damn. That's yeah. Wild. So what eventually happens with the next move? So because of that violation, how I, much time? So I didn't know how much, I didn't know like, there were the, Give you the time. Contacted my PO over that. When well, my PO found out, she calls me. She's like, oh, yeah, so you had a fun weekend in Amesbury, huh? Mm. I'm like, yo, wait, what? Right. <laughs> because, well, I wasn't thinking police contact. Anytime you're involved with police, you get pulled over, mm -hmm. your PO, your parole officer will find out. But then People don't know when you sign that paper what's on there. And that's, exactly. And that's, they have every right to do that. Exactly. Just, yep. Exactly. So went back, another violation. So I had to start over again. And then I sat the same there thing for did another you get, five months. And eventually get into another program? Yeah, I went to, um, oh yeah, I came back over here. That's when I graduated. No, I already told you about that. I graduated it the second time. Did you time. eventually graduate drug court? Though? Yeah, in 2017, I graduated. So I graduated the Salvation Army 2016, OD'd again. 
That's why I had to go back. And then they sent me to a pro uh, uh, project turnabout in Weymouth. Can't leave like you had no freedom compared to the place over here. I heard that was a strict program. Yeah, man. I'm surprised that. Like a lockdown type yeah, of Yeah, it was almost. crazy. And wasn't you completed that? <laughs> <laughs> I completed it though. Okay. It was like a nine month program. So you complete the drug court, you graduate that program. Yeah, graduate. Now you have nothing, it's scot free. Nothing, it's scot free. What are you doing with your life? Are you working? Or are selling you... drugs. Okay, so you're in the streets. That's what <laughs> it is. Selling drugs, though. yeah. Yep. I'm gonna be real with you. I was selling I was selling fentanyl. Were you doing were you kinda doing your thing the whole time in the program or were you or is that something that where all of a sudden you're done with that? So I wasn't doing anything when I was at the program because there was a lot of like okay. snitching going so on. So was it something where you started did you get back on popping pills like, and doing the drugs, and that's why you started selling, or you just wanted the bread? I just wanted the money. Bread. It was like already like set in stone what I was gonna do. Like the day I left that program, oh, had a good shorty. Fuck that up. So I like to get into that mindset. What was your genius plan <laughs> going yeah, into? Yeah, that was it, not man. a genius plan at all. It not was at just. All. It was like a quick like. You know what I mean? That's just something that just. Wanted to get back into doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I planned this shit out and everything. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to give myself, like, six months. You know, that shit don't last no six months. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yep. So what happens? Trafficking charge. <laughs> trafficking. Perks. Trafficking. So trafficking. What did they catch you with? A bunch of pills? They ended up raiding my grandmother's house. That, that right there, like... How did that make you feel as a grandson? Because it, it sucks that like we bring the loved ones. Shit. Yeah. Like, I... Just, I never see my Aunt Trisha... She ended up bailing me out. I never seen her cry in my life. Mm. Not one time. She seen me in cuffs. I, she was just bawling her eyes. I felt something like, damn, I fucked up. Damn. And then I wasn't even like prepared to talk to her sister, my, my other aunt. It was bad. What was it? Just a, was it just a knock at the door? Or did they scare your grandma? Nah, so I was on. Um, so here's the thing, right? I, it it could have got a little bit worse for me because... I had left, I went and hit a play real quick, came back around the block, I see this dude, I thought he was coming, he, the way he looked like he was positioned, the way he was walking, or kind of like suddenly moving from, mm -hmm. I thought he went into the crib. I'm like, what the fuck, what the fuck is this? So I ran down on him, but fuck, I had the bag, pulled a badge out, I'm like, damn, mm. I almost moved on him, because right. I'm like, Yo, my, my grandmother's in there, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, damn. Bad. So they ended up raiding the house. They did, it was just my my room though. They didn't touch nothing. I was like, oh, do not fuck up okay. my grandmother's crib. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just go up to my room and that's it. You guys got a warrant just for my room. That's it. Just mm. don't touch nothing else. Okay. You know what I mean? If there's any places else that's on the warrant, by all means, but be respectful, please. So did you were you aware of like how many like tra trafficking, were you aware of the law? Did you figure you were caught up with trafficking? Oh yeah, or is that some oh yeah, that's okay. something that I already you already knew. Yeah, I already what, knew. What you know what I mean? Was. Yeah, exactly. I already knew. So my aunt ended up bailing me out, and I was fighting it. I go in front of the drug court judge. He held my ass. I was embarrassed too. He's like, "Damn, Michael, what happened?" Damn. <laughs> but because he was my drug court judge, it was like conflict of interest. Okay. So he's like, "I can't." He's like, "I'm gonna hold your ass, but I can't." be on this case with you. Right. I ended up going away for like, that was a, it was actually Cinco de Mayo day. So I didn't think I was gonna get a bail because I kind of cracked a joke. I'm like, yeah, this, this bail bondsman is on the beach sipping a Corona right now. Hmm. He ain't coming, you know what hmm. I mean? Like, I thought I was gonna, it was a Saturday. I thought I had to stay the weekend, but ended up bailing out, went to court that Monday. That's when I got held. Yeah. And then I ended up um, getting the, I told, I told my aunt to take the money back, the bail, just revoke it, because I didn't want to have her spend more, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is my mess, I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then um, ended up getting a bail reduction down to um, five from 20, mm -hmm. and I ended up bailing out again. From Nashville, you back in Nashville? Or, yeah, uh, I, was in, I, was in, I was in Nashville Nash, Street okay. that time. So I, I met a, little, a lot of good dudes when I was, I was on 2-1. It was the 10. You know, they, they got different um, blocks. Nash. Okay. You've been to Nash before? I, right? I never. No, I've only been to um, Middlesex County, Plymouth County, okay. and then um, upstate. All right. All right. Yeah, so how they do it in Nashville Street, right? They color code. 
like certain hoods in Boston, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, you gotta go over here. So how do you fit in? You from Cambridge? That is yeah, really so like, wherever, yeah, or? like back, like when I went then, it was like they just throw you wherever. Right. But now they got like certain certain units where like dudes from like Cambridge go, wow. dudes from Somerville go. That's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And then so, but you get the bail reduction, you get out. Yeah, and yeah now what you thinking about a plea bargain? You get indicted. Yeah, from so, oh, man, I can't even really like. I can't even tell, like, the whole story because, yeah, it's crazy. It's, like, someone ended up helping me out okay. with that situation because I kind of had, like, a head start on them. I just mm -hmm. didn't know when it was going to happen. So when they came into the crib, they grabbed a whole bunch of cut. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all that I had in the crib was cut, and I had some money. So that was it. drug certs come back from the lab? Yeah. It's not drugs? Not drugs. Case dismissed? Dismissed. Okay. Smacked it. From the streets too. From the streets too. Okay, so it was it, good. All right, but you still you still selling, or is this, this a wake point, up call and you kind of want to go? Legit? Yeah, that was a wake up call. So from that, that was 2018. So from 2018 to 2020, before I just got mm -hmm. the next bid, mm -hmm. I was doing good. I was still selling on the side, but I was doing security. I ended up working for Minuteman Security mm -hmm. in East Boston. So that was good. I was working like 100 hours, 120 hours a week. Just working, mm. doing overnights, selling my shit on the side, whatever. So I went from East Boston, went to Roxbury, and then from Roxbury I went to Jamaica Plain. Mm -hmm. Got like a little apartment, and then I was gonna um, go move to Mattapan because I had like, I ended up getting the money to get a condo, rent a condo. Ended up going going to Dela Casa Nashua Street again. <laughs> yeah. So what happens now? Twenty twenty. Yeah. So I did good straight for two years without no bullshit happening. I mean, there was a lot of bullshit happening, but I just never got jams, you know what I right, mean? Right, so right. I, I ended up getting shot at. This was like, this was the worst week ever. I ended up getting shot at. This dude ends up pulling a knife on me because he was trying to steal some shit at CVS. This was at work. You were working Fucked security? Up. Yeah. Both getting shot at too was while you were working security? No, nah, no, nah, that, 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 okay. that, that, was a, that was another thing. I had to go, um, had to, go to a certain section on um, Roxbury, and then I was coming out of it, and certain people, it was a... Yeah, it was yeah, you don't gotta get situation. Into yeah, so at work when I was at work, dude pulled that dude was all fucked up on drugs. I thought mm -hmm. it was on meth or something. I'm like, this dude was getting crazy. But my only concern was like there was little kids, there was mm -hmm. women and shit, customers and shit like that, right? Cause like it was right over there off Mass Ave. Um, but yeah, so like dudes wilding out. I'm like, damn, dude pulled a knife on me. If I moved on him, I would have got fired because I guess, like, if you're a security guard, you can't physically put your hands on people or whatever. Okay. Damn. So this dude was getting crazy with me, getting crazy with me. So, like, I'm just, like, oh, I'm just, like pleading with him, like, bro, just leave the store. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, come on, what are you doing? I was, like, scared these kids, people mm -hmm. walking around or whatever. I was like, yo, grab whatever and get the fuck out of here pretty much, you know? Damn. So dude starts getting, like, we're getting towards that, the exit. And then dude starts getting crazy with me. He's like, yeah, you's a fucking bitch. Damn. <laughs> I'm like, oh my, I'm about to lose my job in like two seconds. I'm in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, I got all this good shit going. I'm like, right. Michael, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. So we almost start getting into it, though, because we're, we're at the door to exit, and he's just still talking mad shit. The customers are looking at me and like, yo, why aren't you like taking right, his right, ass right. out to store? It's like, and they don't know that I can't physically mm. remove somebody. The uh, manager at CVS ends up calling the cops or whatever. She's like, yeah, I called the police, blah, blah, blah. Thinking yeah. that's going to scare him. Like, oh, this dude don't give a fuck, clearly. Right, right, right. This is like 15 minutes going on, you know? And then um, dudes ends up trying to swing it on me. End up stepping. He ends up tripping, falling on the floor. And then he gets up. I grabbed his bag, right? Grabbed it. And then he starts running out of the store. I go running after him. He ends up tripping again. Damn. And then, like, everyone's looking. I'm about to just clap his shit from the back, bro. Everyone's looking at me. They're like, yo, Michael, don't do mm. it. Don't do it. I'm like, Ugh. It was like mid swing. I was about to crush his shit, bro. Just yeah. prevent, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I really, that's, that's I, the I thing stopped about catch, catching yourself before. Yeah, yeah. it's like. Now that I think about it, I should have trashed this shit, you know what I mean? And he was getting crazy with me. Getting older, yeah. you start realizing, like, yo, what's worth it and what's not worth it. Like, yeah. well, is this going to be a crash up my whole entire life, be a loser? Like, no, yeah. I, can't, I can't do that, you know what I mean? So when's the next time you get arrested? How long after so, that? So 2020 comes around, catch a stabbing, stabbing charge, assault and battery, dangerous weapon, went away. 
attempted murder and stuff too? Or nah, how did that I mean, work out? the person, I kind of went, like, like, I'm going to say this right now, all the wrong people died when I was in prison. Mm, and that's yeah. all I'm going to say. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so I lost a lot of people that, that passed away while I was incarcerated. So. so just talk about that. How how do you deal with that when you're incarcerated? Man, people don't realize how tough it could be. Or, or So first person that died was my grandmother. Mm. That shit broke me. I talked to her too. She had on um, leukemia and my aunt, she was driving her back and forth from East Boston to the Cape and shit like that. But then she just had her live with her. And then I had the crib in East Boston. That right there, it just, it, it hurt. It hurt, you know what I mean? Like I just, I cried like a bitch. I went in the shower, cried. I didn't give a fuck, whatever. You know what I mean? It was like I was taking a shower. I ain't no one gonna notice I was crying when I walk out. Where were you at this point when she passed away? Are you upstate yet? No, I was in county. I was in South Bay. You fight fight in that case? Yeah. Okay. What no. has? Do you end up pleading out? Um, unfortunately, yeah. So, if I went to trial, they would have they would have smoked me. Mm -hmm. They were trying to give me fifteen years if I went to trial. That's the name so, of the game, yeah. Yeah. So I mean. The first, the first offer, if I didn't go to trial, was um, six six in a day, no probation, and then um, I'm like, yeah, I ain't taking that. Mm -hmm. Like in my head. Six, How old are you at this point? I was You're almost thirty. At I want to say right? thirty one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was no nah, thirty, thirty not nah, thirty one, thirty one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was thirty one, and um, yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah, like, like you say, you get older, you look in the, at the time yeah, a little differently. Like this, so. I'm like, damn, we'll be almost 40 years old when I get old. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? But it comes with the nature of the game, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know what you sign up for when you start doing reckless shit? You know what I mean? So going to jail, is that's, that's what comes with the, that's part, that's of part of it. So what happens from there? You get another court date or you... Yeah, so I end up getting another court date. Did you try to squeeze it all the way to the day of trial? That's what I did. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> I, no the day of trial. I, spent, <laughs> I spent majority of my time in county. Mm hmm and so, like, going on, like, two years, they're like, yo, what are we, what are we doing? I, I feel okay, like I got, so I got railroaded, too, because I had three lawyers. First lawyer, he ended up becoming a judge. Mm. And second lawyer ended up going to um, getting a new, like, office down in, like, Western Mass. And, like, the third lawyer was some old lady, like, yeah. on her way out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but she ended up, what did she end up getting you for a She ended up getting for... me, um... Three to four. Three to four? With four years probation. Okay, how'd you feel at that point? You got two years in, that's not that bad. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, I mean, I'm just, I just want to get this time over and done with, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, I just want to get this past me, mm -hmm. start my life over, and okay. just get on with my life, you know what I mean? So at this point, classification is, is it Shirley Max? Shirley Max, yeah. Okay, and you know, so what's, what's your thought process going up there? <sighs> I'm like, all these stories I'm hearing going right. upstate, it was like, mentally, like, I could do time. Right. You know what I mean? Anybody that, that's done jail time, I feel can just do time. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? No matter what it is. But a lot of people, it just breaks them. Right. You know what I mean? They're mentally not capable of like doing that. Like I've seen mm -hmm. people stressing out and they've been down only like two months, three right. months. Yeah, I've seen it. A year, like... Really, there's mm -hmm. people that won't be able to walk off that door, and you're over here complaining over like some some pro probation yeah. violation. Like, come on. Okay, that's crazy. So but. talk about that. You you go from court up to the max. How's that? Yeah. Work? So I ended up getting a stay of execution for like two days, two day. okay. just getting like my affairs in order and yeah. shit. And I was trying to do something real quick, so did that. So I took my plea deal on October fourteenth, twenty twenty two. When I've stayed on the 60s. Okay. Was that a Friday? I think it was a Friday that I went up state. So I went, I went, they brought me to Shirley Max and they, like, it's not like county where, like, you can keep your own shoes. Like, I was, yeah. I was told that you can, you can wear, wear like, tees up there, like the long johns and, like, all whites. So I did that. Mm -hmm. Or you could wear a sweatsuit. Right. So, I did that. I go there. They're like, yeah, you ain't getting none of this. They you took gotta, all your stuff? Yeah, they took everything. Damn. But I guess that's their, their, their protocol. Okay. So they take everything. They search it for contraband or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they'll give it back to you like a week or two. Okay. So, yeah, I was on L2. I was on M, M2 first for like, I want to say a week, and then they put me over to L2. I guess okay. like, um, 
they got a block with like new people that are coming in that just took their time. Mm-hmm. It's like a um quarantine. Just making sure you ain't got COVID gotcha. or whatever, and they'll let you in. What was like the a different unit? Biggest difference that you noticed between when you get up to Shirley Max and, and County? Is it a different <laughs> vibe? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's definitely a feeling, but the main thing that really stuck is it out similar to me, because it's still classification, so a lot of people. Yeah, it's a little but, um, different. I was up, I was up there with a lot of people that I was in county with. So yeah, it, it, right. it helped out a little bit, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The, yeah, the main thing that stuck out to me was uh, county time, people were getting it shaking with their beef. Mm-hmm. Upstate, living, eating with them, doing mm-hmm. this and that. I was like... You talking about street beef? Yeah, street beef, hood beef, whatever. That's one thing I never understood. There was a lot of older dudes that I was talking to, and they're like, well, it's, they put it to me like this. They're like, well, why are we going to waste our time? to do, you know what I'm saying, bullshit or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, like, we're going to mess up our beds, this and the third. But in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like an excuse, though. Cause, like, you're really, if you're standing on business, stand on business all the way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, it's like if people died behind certain things and you're not doing something, yeah, that just shows the type of person you really are. You're going to say all this and be like, yeah, when I see you on the street, that's when it's on. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, that makes no sense. Yeah. yeah I got you. That's it's, one thing that really... It's confusing for sure. What happens though? So where are you at with points? What does that look like for uh, you? So the point system is like, depend. It, it, they, they rate your points on tickets that you get in county, fights or whatever. Um, it's like worst tickets you can get are fight, yeah. fights and weapon tickets. So yeah. I had two fights in county. And I find this the C dub kid and this this blood. So those were like they 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 didn't even show up on my thing though. But I had six points added up. Okay. That was minimum. That's minimum points right there. What are these fights over? Just because sometimes it's stupid, sometimes it's oh serious. But so it people is. don't realize how stupid people fight. What stupid yeah, so, things people fight over sometimes. So the first fight, right there, this is retarded. The first fight was with the blood. He ended up. So what he did, he pulled a stunt. Right. Um, we was on three three. In um, South Bay, you know, pulling a stunt, saying he was gonna stab one of the sergeants or whatever. Mm. He, he, he was from Mission or whatever, Mission Hill, and um, sergeant wasn't having it. He's like, "Yeah, you up out of here," you know what I'm saying? So he comes back, and he ended up seeing my my celly. I had to check him out myself because he ended up saying he said the N word to him. Mm. And I'm like, yo, bro, I don't go for that. So you talking about that same dude they talk about? With yeah, that yeah. So. He and my, my old cellie called him the N-word. I'm like, bro, I, yeah, you got, you ain't living here saying that, bro. I don't go for that or anything like that. He's like, well, what the fuck, bro? Like, nah, I'm not hearing that. But the, the blood kid, he was a skinner. Mm. He ended up taking advantage of the, like, some mentally um, disabled chick or whatever. She was underage. Damn. It's like, no one's got him out of here. Dude's up there braiding people's hair and shit like that. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> why did you Why did you feel that was something that you had, had to hit? It, it wasn't like really. A, 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 it wasn't really something that I wanted to address and handle, but it's just something like I don't, I don't really go for that. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna take advantage of some, somebody that's not really all there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yo, that's one thing in jail. Like if you're a rat, a skinner, a pedophile, you're out of there. Mm-hmm. It was. It's funny. We had um, I one of the times I got shipped out of Cell Bay, was because. Um, they, they ended up shipping me and like seven or eight other dudes. We were all runners on mm-hmm. the unit. They shipped us all out because there was a whole bunch of skinners getting checked off yeah. on the same shift for mm. like three days in a row. They were taking them out in like six groups of six, groups of seven, lining mm-hmm. them up on the wall. <laughs> yeah. As they should. They said they were scared for their life. They're like, yo, dude said they were going to stab us. They ended up shaking down the block and then they shipped us out Damn. tight. But the um the blood kid, right? He I get my I see my celly. I see when dude came back on a block, he went to a cell, put his bag or whatever. But um I seen he see my celly, but he didn't go for him. He thought I said the shit. Oh. Like, yo, bro, you, you shitting me right now? So I see it, he's like, oh, like I see he's about to do some weirdo shit. So he starts walking towards me. I was I was trying to get it myself because I'm about to play ball, play a game of basketball before yeah. we locked in. And then dude just starts walking, getting closer, closer. I'm like, oh, this shit's about to go on, right? Mm. So I see about to throw a punch. So I'm standing like, I'm standing like this. 
Mm -mm -mm. Like the Captain Morgan dude on the chair. So I kicked the table over because you can move him. Mm -hmm. And the dude goes like this. I kicked the table towards him. Then we start tussling. Damn. It was bad. So it was like all over, but like a miscommunication. Yeah, miscommunication. Bro, That's like... how both of the fights were, though. Like, my second one was the same thing. Dude was talking, um, uh, dude was talking to somebody that I fuck with, and then, um, he thought I said it. Damn. The block got shook down. He ended up leaving at like a weird time during the day, and then the block is shaking down. Yeah. He comes back after the block got shook down. And then everyone's talking or whatever. Yeah. And then dude, dude that I, I thought he was my man's threw my ass right under the bus. Like, oh, man said this, that, and the third. What? The fuck? Hell no. And then he thought he was going to get jumped on the rec deck. But everyone that allegedly was going to jump him was in the shower. Mm. I was on the phone. I was about to call somebody. As soon as I put the phone on the hook, dude's like, boop. Suck cracks me, bro. Damn. I'm like, you fucking shitting me? Dude, going at it. Tussling, I was I'm like, yo, just but those shit. but like you said, those points now they follow you upstate. Yeah, so they what follow happens? Upstate. What you see classification? Where do they classify you to? So I told them, right? I'm like, I I got six points. I should be going to a, a minimum. I, I had like I had my I had my bid plan. The rest of my bid planned out. I'm like, mm -hmm. I I got low points. I'm gonna go to a minimum, get a job, go to mm -hmm. pre-release, start stacking money. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's time like, oh yeah, you gotta go to a, me a medium. I'm like, I got six points. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm like, oh, let's, I'll stay here, and go to K block, which was the reentry block, because you mm -hmm. only, you needed like 18 months or less to go there. I was like, I'll go there or or send me to a minimum. Right. Like, I ain't trying to go to no medium. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They said they said um, uh, they said Gardner and Norfolk were like the best. Like, yeah. Norfolk's number one, Gardner's second. Yeah. I guess they cleaned up Gardner. I guess that's where all like the the skinners go to or whatever or yeah, went yeah, to. Yeah. And at one point, yeah, it's a different uh, different generation. Yeah, man. different I generation. Yeah, from, like oh uh, nine to two thousand eleven. Okay, you know what I mean. Okay, so, but that's what they were saying there too. So where did they classify you to? Did, they classified you get modified? Shirley Medium. Okay, yeah. Shirley Medium. Yeah. So, so how long is that? I mean, it's it's on the same compound. Do you when you get classified? Are you how long until you're at the medium? So what you do is they like you gotta pack up all your stuff. You go sit down in a tank for like five hours, and then they'll hop in a van, bring your stuff, mm -hmm. drive up, drive, drive down the hill because the max is up top, and then the medium mm -hmm. or the minimum is up on the hill, and then the max, and then the medium is right there. Um, yeah, it was weird. Like when we, I was in the van, right? The van's got windows. It's like a regular van. Yeah, it's I'm crazy. I'm like, what vans, the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm, like, I'm like, this is crazy. The blue and gray. Yeah, yup, mm -hmm. yup. And um, the way we we were like going down the hill or whatever, we're, like looking at it, I'm like, oh, this shit looks crazy. Mm -hmm. Just the way it was set up. Because mm -hmm. I was just used to the max being there. I was like, I'd rather stay right. there. I was comfortable. Right, right, right. But that's another thing, too, being comfortable. You can't, yeah, yeah. Always having to change. Yeah, you new can't people. Be, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm tired of being people. It's a people. whole thing. I know. Yeah. It's, it's the worst. It does suck, but it's one of those things you got to deal with. So when you get down to uh, Shirley Medium, but now you are here with, it's not classification no more. Dudes, are you, there's lifers, you know, yep. even in the mediums. There's yep. plenty of lifers. What's the difference now? Do you feel about classification to 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 the medium? It was it was easier to like settle in with. As I said, I was like I was even there too with people I was in county with. It's like everyone that I was with in county mm -hmm. we was in the max together and they was in the yeah. medium together. You know what I mean? And that that was pretty dope that too. You know, so I didn't really have to worry about too much like having to meet new people or mm -hmm. chill with new people. Right. Like I, people there I knew already. You know what I'm was saying? Was there anybody? They're from Cambridge. That, that yeah, you know, that was like um, usually a homeboy comes in yeah. and try to, you know, what, so, whatever uh, they can. So, little man Smokey was there. K Mafia was there, like right at the ass end of my bed okay, too. So yeah. that, that was kind of. He was in here um, right before he went up. Yeah, there. yo, yo I yep. seen that. Yeah, yeah so I was actually so with his here. uncle. Um, Bobby. Bobby, yeah. I yeah. just seen him on the train like yeah. two weeks my, ago. My dad grew up with his dad. Okay, dad and his uncle. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, yeah, yep. Kevin and Bobby in the projects. Yeah. So what's that like though? Your whole, what's your experience there when you get to the um to the medium? I mean, so they got the they got this program called the CRA. Yep. 
Damn, perfect probably fit for you. You did it all before, man. I mean, you get the good time. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, 15 days, you're getting six months for six months. I'm like, ah, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I'm sure it's something you can get from it, too. You are getting ready. You know, you're getting a little short, man. You don't yeah. want to end up back here, man. Yeah, That's something true. you have to address. But the thing was, I'm like, this is... This, I thought it was gonna be good, but it just it wasn't for me. I'm okay. Like, Yo, this ain't getting me ready for back out there. Like I've been down a few okay. years now. You know what I'm saying? So was it too much focus on the drugs and less on the reentry? Did so, you want more reentry type? Yeah, of, I wanted more reentry. Or like a more, skill. Yeah, that you could exactly. Take with you? Okay. Exactly. And they were kind of like, it, they were, there was these things called interventions, right? They had a whole block get up at a certain time, and then you got to sit at the table from 8 in the morning to, like, 3.15 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Obviously, with, like, a couple of breaks here and there, but it's wow. like, you guys got us sitting down here like little kids doing homework, mm. like, literally filling up packets. This is not helping me. So, did you just say effort and, and yeah, be out with the program? Yeah, I, I ended up or? blitzing on one of the TRA chicks. I, I was... <laughs> I ended up calling her a blade and shit. I, I, oh, damn. Yeah, that was you bad. you get thrown in the hole for that or just kicked out the I program? got kicked. I got recycled. They sent me from, um, it was E2. So they sent me to B, um, no, I went to B2 after I was the A1. A1's like the um, the recycle block. Okay. Like if you get if you get kicked off a block, go go to A1. Okay. Or if you um, come in from the hole, you go to A1. So right. I sat there for like 30 days. And then I was comfortable right there, 30 days, whatever. Then I went to B2. And it was smooth over there. And is that where you stayed the rest of your time in B2? Yeah, so another situation happens. I ended up on, um, whatchamacallit, got jammed up with a shank. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how's that happen? They just, I mean, doing so, shakedowns like, or do you <laughs> drop it so or something? So me and my celly, right? <laughs> we, 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 we was on. Um, we was like ready to go to bed. We was watching TV, and then all of a sudden they just they ran into the hut, and then they ended up finding um. So like the the toothbrushes you're familiar with, those mm -hmm. the toothbrushes you, you can break them and use them as like pasta stirrers or mm -hmm. whatever macaroni stirrers. That's what the fuck it was. And they're like, oh no, it's a shank, blah blah blah. Oh, it's so you wasn't it wasn't even yeah, something that you no, really had as a weapon. Yeah, no. Nah. So just talk about that. Because I had, I had the same thing in um when I was in A one and they did a shakedown over there too and they didn't take it. I'm like, yo, yeah. what the fuck? Like a couple of COs that were there during the shakedown were there when they lugged me in my Damn. celly. I'm like, oh, so how fuck? much time they give you for a quote unquote shank for that? So time? Then my celly, he ended up doing a solid. He took the hit? Yeah, he took the hit for me. No bullshit. So that was that was a good look. That okay, but then look. he's gone now. You dolo. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, he, he knew you got, I was about to go home and shit yeah, like that. You no, know what I was? Up. I was trying to do certain things yeah. before I went home. So, so I mean, at this point, you start getting close to release. Right now, you're looking yeah. at. You said you had probation when you got out, right? Yeah, I got four years probation. Okay. Do you start developing a plan for when you get out? This this is it right here, right? I had all this time to sit and really think about what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Or when I got out, what I wanted to uh, pursue and stuff like that. And it like really dawned on me like a year and a year and a half into my bed. What I want to do is I want to make clothing. I want to make clothing for certain hoods in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. You got the sports teams with the hoods and shit like that. You know what yeah, I mean? So I want to try to do that. And then also do it for Boston too. Mm -hmm. And dope. I figured Wear the, wear the wear the t-shirts, hoodies, and their music videos or whatever. Mm -hmm. Try to you know what I mean. Something positive. Okay. So where are you with that? Do you have a name of it? How do I was so I, I came up with a couple of names. What is is like I figured I call it Big Step of Hood Tees. Okay. It's kind of corny. I might I might change the name, it's the, but so it's, it's like still, it's something that just kind of kept sticking. Like I too, kept, so it's to be determined. That's yeah, what it to is. be it, determined. Subject yeah. to change. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, subject to change. Okay. <laughs> But it's the idea that yeah. that's really what it's about. You know like, when I mean? you start, like, really sit down and thinking about certain things, it's like, there's a lot of ways to make legal money. Especially nowadays with the like, internet. Like, all the hustles out there, like, you don't even need to sell drugs. Is that something that you were looking into during your time? Are you reading, yeah, like, certain magazines? So, like, I used to read the sneaker magazines, sneaker books, and stuff like that, and it's like, um... There's this dude, right? He's on YouTube. He's called Slobby Robbie. He's got like a consignment. You know who he is? No. No. But I, just the name. He got on. It's, it's, it's funny, right? Yeah. So, like, he's got like a thrift, like, consignment store where he sells designer, 
Okay. They sell shoes and stuff like that. And like that's my end game right there. That's what I that's what I want to have. Is that so you read about him in that magazine? Is that what it was? No, or is I, I used to watch I used to watch like his podcast and stuff okay. before I went into okay, yeah, yeah. jail. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Got you. So you end up between weight and trial and everything, you get out. How much time did you do straight on that one? I did 44 months. 44 months. 44 months for the poor baby. I was just saying, I was just going to say that. How ironic is that? It's crazy, right? Months. Word. Absolutely. What did you learn about yourself in those 44 months? Honestly, just uh, really just take a step back. Don't really just go head on a certain thing or stuff or whatever. Just really sit back, think about your next move. Mm-hmm. Cause I see, I'm 35 years old. I'm embarrassed that I just came home, got to start over, mm-hmm. motherfucking bracelet. I feel like I gotta knock on people's doors and be right. like, "Hey, I'm living in your neighborhood." You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, right. It's crazy. It's yeah. like the patience too. I learned you like I gotta to. be a little bit more patient yeah. and not really jump in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, listen, man. It's it's never too late to do great. If you look at all the people who become successful, some people ain't but fifty before they become a billion. Like yeah. you never know. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. definitely never too late to do great. But talk about what were some of your outlets in there? How did you pass your time in there? What is something like that you kind of blew off steam? Ah, uh, just working out, really. Working um, out. Yeah, they took, did they take the weights? Yeah, because old boy went crazy and ended up taking the free weight, smashing the, the CEO's head open. Damn. Yeah, they took all the free weights out of Shirley. I think I, I feel I feel like most of the camps almost. Yeah, point, I think right? they, they took them all from the state. I don't know if other states are like following with suit. Okay. But so what was what was like a, just a little bit of your workout routine? Then sometimes you got to get uh, up a little. Uh, so I like creative. I started yeah, work. You know what I mean? Water bags. Yeah, books, water bags, real, book so. bags. Mm-hmm. Like towards the end, like I was just doing the the book bag. You know the what I mean? Just to, yep. Yeah, just to keep appearances. Yeah. But like beginning and like middle of my bed, I was just. Doing uh, pull ups, dips, because in Nashua Street they got the they got the pull up bar with the dip bar yeah. put on it. Nice. And they're doing push ups off that sit ups. Okay, I yeah. mean you're from Cambridge. Did you play a lot of ball? Basketball, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Is that a good way to kind of I feel like to bond with people that you may yeah, not because you're like yeah you're, you're, you're meeting everybody from everywhere. So yeah. like everyone Something loves common. everyone loves basketball. Everyone loves sports. Yeah. So like. People playing ball on the court and have like tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah, you know what yep. I mean? So yep, everybody put like a couple of dollars in a bag, like, oh, whatever best team wins, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just something to pass the time. Any other sports do they have like the softball they had, field? They had all um, so before I left, they had the football going on and they had a handball tournament. Okay. Yeah. Did you get into handball at all? Nah, it was just, like I played <laughs> a couple of games here and there, but it was it something that is it wasn't it, for me? You know what I mean. Is it is it learning something like ball probably comes second nature at yeah. this point for you? Is it learning something new? Yeah, pretty that's much. That's frustrating in front of people not being good. Yeah, those are some people kind of looking at that me like are, laughing. Well, and... well, we get self conscious about yeah, these exactly. type of things, and I think that's important to talk about sometimes because you know, as men, sometimes we don't talk about stuff like exactly. that. Yeah, that's the, being that's... afraid to mess up in front of people in front Word. of so called. You know what I mean? It's it's prison. It's yeah. all, t- and it's like I look back at an experience like tutoring. For a GD students, and it's just kind of like I was a young kid thinking back, like wow, it's kind of cool thing that I did, like yeah. you know what I mean? I'm a twenty, what was that, twenty two year old kid tutoring like a forty year old, what you would call calm, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's a wild experience, bro. So, but it's humbling too. You yeah, know absolutely. What I mean? Like, I mean, absolutely. A lot of people they're afraid to say like if someone asks them like, "Oh, you okay?" <clears throat> they're like, "Yeah, I'm good." Blah blah blah. Yeah. It's all right to say you're not all right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because there's a lot of people out there killing themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's my tough. kid's mother, that was another death. She ended up committing wow. June 15th. I didn't find out until June 27th. I was the last person to find out. They pulled me, Jeez. they called me down to the Ips office. They're like, oh man, you want to sit down? We got to talk to you. I'm like, the fuck? This is the Ips office. Like, yo, it's never a good thing mm. when you go there. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, yo, the fuck? Your mind's already probably. Yeah, like, exactly. Damn. I'm like, hey, what the fuck am I even doing here? They're like, oh, well, um, we, uh, we got a number for you to call. We want you to call that number. Mm. And like, 
like, all right, they're like, yo, you know, you know, so and so, like, yeah, that's my my yeah. BM's father. Like, what are you talking? Like, he's my son. I started bugging out. I thought right, something right. happened to my son. I got a sixteen year old son. Yeah. So, end up calling the number, no answers. So like another hour goes by, they end up calling me back down. They're like, all right, well, you got these papers, you got to sign and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, you guys tell me what the fuck is going on. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, um, the kid's mother, she ended up dying. Damn. I was like, what? I started bugging. Yeah. That, shit, that shit fucked me up too. But I had to, um, I had to sign um, guardianship papers, like temporary guardianship mm -hmm. for my son to her parents. Because if I did it, he would have went to the system. Yeah. Did you start to like reflect on yourself and maybe like kind of where you were at and feeling bad about how you were as a father, being away as a father, and then this happened, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm I mean, sure you I, internalized a lot of that. Yeah, that, sh that shit fucked me up. It really yeah. did. Like, me and my me and my kid's mother, we we never really see eye to eye, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she, used to, That's tough. she used to hang my kid like, a, like, yo, he's doing this, selling drugs, like, I need some money, like, I'm already paying child support, like, right. it's like, yo, you're looking at a son like a check, like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. But it's like, I talk to him here and there and shit like that, so... Trying to trying to build that up, you know. Yeah. And then we're gonna see each other and stuff like that. And try to, you know, I gotta have a sit down with him and talk to yeah. him and shit there's, like that, you know. There's a lot. There's yeah, a lot. there's a lot. Like, what are some of the, <clears throat> what are some of the things you're looking forward to, as far as like with your freedom now? There's things maybe you never got a chance to do that you kind of. Well, I don't want to take it for granted like I always used to. Mm. Because I, just, I literally never gave a fuck about nothing. I just go out, go about my business. You know, I don't care if I hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't care whatever, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if I hurt myself. But it's it's like, really got to take a step back, you know, <clears throat> realize that, like, life's precious. You, you get it one life, you got to you gotta do your best to, like, really, whatever you're good at, just find that, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And just, you know, love, love. Take the people that you have in your life and love them because you never know when you're going to lose them and stuff like that, you know? So, Life's hard, but it's like you got to just deal with it. It is, yeah. You know? Absolutely. It's, um, it can always be worse. It could be. You know be. what I'm saying? And, you and always look always at someone it out there does have it worse. Exactly. You know what I mean? For sure. Exactly. But you are pretty fresh home, right? Like, yes. How long have you been out now? March 6th. March 6th. Out. Okay, so it's only been like a little over a month. Yeah. Okay, so... What you been up to? <clears throat> so I'm, I'm residing with a friend in North Cambridge right now. Just trying to get in the back, the gist of things and you stuff. Getting your ducks in a row, like how, yeah. Let like, people like you got to get an ID. All this stuff. Yeah. So the the prison, or? the prison actually does that for you. They'll, okay. they'll get the ID, the birth certificate, social security card. They'll have that waiting for you when okay. you leave. They'll give that to you when you leave. So. And you get out, you see your PO. Yeah, you got. I had to go see my PO first thing. I went to the PO, talked to her. And then I went to DTA, got food stamps off mm -hmm. the rip. Did so that. how do you feel about your situation with your PO and being on probation? Is this something you think you you got? It, it, I I have to. I got no choice because it, it sucks to even say this, but I don't even think I got another bed in me. Yeah. And people like probably that. gonna take that like out of context. Like, nah, no, nah, don't even think right, it like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's just such a waste of time. Like mm. this. Like There's so up. much talent behind them walls. Like, it's sickening. The way people get treated, it, 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 it's devastating. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I I got another chance to, like, be a better version of me. Take advantage and, and, of it. Yeah, I got to take full advantage of it. Man, what's what's the worst part about prison? Missing, missing wakes, funerals. Losing those loved ones. Yeah. And how's it, how's it to, feel like, to come home to that? Is it, I mean, honestly, I haven't really. Is it like hitting you against kind of? Because when you're in there, it's, it's it's different. It's almost like you're not around people anyway. You're away. Yeah, anyway, you know it, it, it's, it's a different world. Yeah, like, jail, prison, totally different compared to out here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you kind of gotta hold your feelings in, but like try not to like react. You know what I mean? If like if you're going through something in there, if you fuck with somebody, try to. Try to talk to them, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they'll understand, or maybe they can um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, understand what you're doing because they've yeah. gone through it too. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? They can like relate. Yeah, yeah, relate. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Drug test. This is all part of yeah, your, your drug thing. test. Um, 
I'm actually I'm also boxing now, so okay. I try trying okay. to just do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? So like, get into that. What are some things that you're doing for recovery? Is are you oh, doing meetings? Be, are you meditating? You. Everybody's I, different, you know. Trips, I haven't so. done I haven't done anything. Okay, are you sticking just, with the working out? Yeah, there's okay. a gym where 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 I'm staying at, so I'll be working out like four days a week, five days a week. No lie, that's that's more important than you think. Just no, keeping, really, yeah, when that, you have that, those good that, habits, that, um, that's what you want to keep, and then you feel better too. Just all, never mind all the benefits of working yeah, exactly. out. You know what I mean, for sure. Like when you stick to something and you enjoy doing it, it it's only gonna feel like it's it, it's work. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, the way I always look at it, I'm like, man. That's probably the worst part of my life. And what got me through that, really, a, yeah. a lot of it was the working out. Yeah, Having exactly. something to look forward to. Exactly. You know what it's I mean? Like a, it's a out, as you were saying earlier, it's like an outlet. That outlet. You and know? that's important. And that's why it's important to what works in there. You're going to need an outlet out here. Exactly. Too, Just a heads up. You're definitely going to need an outlet. <laughs> and you can't turn, you know, being on probation, you can't turn to... um. To the drugs, oh, and, and all no. that, and, and you just got to do. What so I'm gonna make a bag next time. Ex exactly, but also you also, what's the employment status right now? You looking so, or? I got. I had like no, no word of a lie. I've had like 25 interviews. Okay. Shut down every right. one. It was okay. all security jobs. I guess they can't hire ex. They can't hire felons. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it goes against like their licensing or whatever. Okay. But there's a thing though that the jail had given me, the prison gave me, it was called um, federal bonding. Okay. It's like papers, it's like uh, insurance. Like, if, uh, it's like a- um, Incentive? Incentive to yeah. hire me, you right. know what I'm saying? If anybody that's an ex-felon, they should look into it, federal bonding. Absolutely. Cause um, I guess it's, um, they get like $25,000, it's up to like six months. Mm. So like, say I go to work at a, um, like a retail store, and yeah. I'm doing some fuck shit, steal mad shit or whatever, they get covered for that. Insurance. You know what okay. I'm saying? Insurance. And, yeah, there's probably not a lot of um, companies that know about that, but you only need the one yes. Yeah, right? exactly. So, so I started on, um, I, I went on Craigslist and looked up like security on there, whatever. I said um, uh, Felipe's in North Cam uh, Harvard over there was hiring for like a bouncer. Nice. I'm like, Psh, I'm gonna go right there. Yeah. Went over there. They gave me the number to the dude, called him. He's like, yo, come by later on tonight. I'll show you how it is or whatever. Got the job. Yeah. So I've been doing that for like a week now, almost a That's week. That's what's up. Yeah. So, I mean, even besides like the money, obviously you need money. We all need money out here. Yeah. But I'll tell you this. It's the fact that you got, you're got busy, right? Yeah, exactly. If you're working, you, you can't be, be get, yeah, you can't be, be getting arrested. So. Exactly. I'm just trying to, trying to hold a job, work mm -hmm. out. Take care of my business, stand on business. Absolutely. How do you, how'd your PO react with when you told her about the job and everything like that? Is that kind of? She was happy. I ain't gonna lie. She, 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 shout out to Chantel Worm. <laughs> she's mm -hmm. probably the illest PO I've had. She's laid back. She's, she, she's awesome. That's what's up. I couldn't ask for a better PO right now. Yeah, that's what's up. Word, it, it, it kind of makes me sleep a little bit better at night because, like, mm -hmm. all the other POs I've had are just like, tch. Drilling you, drilling you, drilling you. Yeah. And it's like you gotta feel like you gotta walk on eggshells, and after a while, you're like, oh, fuck this shit. And mm -hmm. You start getting crazy. Yeah. So, so you got a little bit of, you got your freedom now, a little yeah. bit of time, man. Try what, to take it one day at a time. What just, do you think that something that like the average person takes for granted about freedom that when you get in there, they. I mean, I think I think a lot of people take life for granted. Life in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you really. Once you're behind the walls, like, that's it. There's nothing else. Unless you, you're yeah. on the phone. A lot of people do their bids differently. People phone bid, whatever, work out, do whatever, play cards, dominoes. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that's, that's it. Really, you got you got your visits, you got the phone, and then you got the, the emails and stuff like that. All that's free now. Yeah. Yep. So that's it's tough. like, a lot of that right there... A lot of people look forward to, you know, that's the only connection to the outside world. That's important. Dude, that's the only thing you got to. besides a TV. You get mm -hmm. tablets up there now. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. The tablets just definitely changed the game, though, for real. <laughs> what but are that's some just... things that you're looking forward to now as far as your freedom, man? Is it? Uh, honestly, like, I'm just, I'm happy to be alive. You know what I mean? I probably should have been chance. dead a long time ago. Do you feel like you have a second chance now? Yeah, definitely. Do you feel like it'll be a... Slap in the face to to not take advantage of it and do do the right thing and enjoy 
your freedom to it the people be. who didn't make it to this it side be, of it. it. Like you said, there's a lot of people stuck behind the walls yeah. that can't come home. Man. It'd be disrespectful mm -hmm. if I ended up back behind the walls. You know what I'm saying? I got a chance that nobody else, like certain people yeah. don't have. You know what I'm saying? And that's so fortunate. Mm -hmm. I just, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of people behind the walls for like foolishness too. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like that's another thing, like that I wanted to touch base on, like. 617 as like a whole, like Cambridge, Boston, mm -hmm. like Massachusetts is at the bottom of the barrel with like the music, talent, everything. Mm -hmm. I just, I kind of wish that like, I know a lot of like the Boston hoods, they wouldn't be able to drop certain beef, but like if they did and they came together, like as like unit, mm -hmm. they could make so much money and they yeah. could be, there's a lot of rappers that are doing good right now, but like if they just focus on the money, just fuck the beef shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They'd be like way up here, you know what I'm saying? Cameron got Millie's, mm -hmm. G Nipsey, yep. you know what I'm saying? Millie's doing Absolutely. good though. Absolutely. G Nipsey's doing good too. Yep. Absolutely, Fast bro. Kobe's doing good oh, also. Yeah. Um, bro. But yeah, that's just one thing that always, that always got to me though is like, I wish Boston was more unified. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we'll probably never see that day. Yeah, things are what they are. Yeah, man. you know what I mean? A lot of politics involved, stuff like that. But I mm. just, like, Massachusetts is, I feel like everyone needs to come together and just collab. Because mm -hmm. you know, look what's happening over there in East Street. They just got federally raided. Yeah, yeah. You know what so, I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, that's man. more people off the streets than in the jails behind the wall. It's, it's bad. Yeah, bro. What advice would you give to like if you could go back in time and talk to like a younger you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would definitely um tell myself just take it slow. Don't rush into everything. Don't I don't know. Just don't try to prove yourself all the time. Goes back to just using your head. Thinking. Yeah, use your head. Think just. Think before you react. Where do you see yourself in five years? If everything goes right, five years from now, everything is going according to plan, what are you doing? Five years from now? Shit, I'm going to be 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Five years, I'm definitely going gonna, gonna to be all probation. That's, that's, a, that's a man though right there. Uh, yep. Yeah, hopefully, God willing, I'm going to have my own stock, like store, yep. uh, selling clothes, sneakers, stuff like that. Like, that was a goal of mine before I went into jail. Like, I just mm -hmm. really, like, like a year, year and a half before I went in, mm -hmm. that's when I really started thinking about that. Like, I re like I started thinking that when I was still selling drugs. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I need an outlet. Like, yeah. I need a, it has to be an end game because right. this you ain't got, it. You can't do it forever. Have yeah, you can't, out. exactly. You know, what about five years from now as far as building that relationship <clears throat> with your kid? We'll be, is we'll that, be is a that essential? Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, that's number one right there. Why is that important to you? Because I don't want him being a fuck up like his father, mm -hmm. honestly, because I don't, I wouldn't wish this, what I've gone through on him or on anybody. You yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. And I appreciate you coming through to tell your story, bro. And Definitely. I don't know if there was um any last words that you wanted to say or something that you wanted to touch on, maybe we didn't get a chance to? I mean, I, just, I was, well, thank you for the opportunity, taking That's your time brilliant. to listen to my story and stuff like that. And um, I just want to say to everybody out there that's locked up, free you. And um, everything's going to get better. Just stick to your plan, stick to your agenda, and um, try to think before you react to stuff. Because yeah. <laughs> if you don't, you're going you're gonna to end up in jail or dead. You know what I mean? Nice. It's just, I don't know, just try to, everybody just try to be better people. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Better Become person the at best, the end of the day. Best version of yourself. Exactly. Absolutely. Tell the people if you want to drop your social media too, where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me on um, Instagram, um, Mizzy Dior 44. Okay. And I'll I'll link it also in the description. All right. You know All right. I mean? I, and then uh, my Facebook, um, Michael Dior. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's what it is. Cool. Yeah, man. And once again, thanks for coming through. No, I, I really, appreciate you, brother. Definitely. I appreciate you. Definitely. Another Cambridge guys. So right. listen, four side, man. baby. Four four. <laughs> that's the boy Mike Dior right there. I'm B Lou. Guys, this is the Bounce Back Podcast. Listen, it is what it is. What's next is what you make it. On that note, we out of here. Peace. Uh
got a moment when they see you down